Hey everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created a simple timeline interaction that uses no triggers, um, with the exception of the standard player triggers. <clears throat> so first we'll take a look at the interaction. So this is um, in response, sorry, to uh, David Anderson's uh, Pantone Color of the Year eLearning Heroes Challenge. So the Pantone Color of the Year is Peach Fuzz, and every year David challenges the community to <clears throat> create something with the Pantone Color of the Year. So what I created was Peaches of History, <clears throat> and so initially I spent a whole lot of time um, sourcing some images of peaches, some of these came from the uh, 360 content library. Um, and then the next most time consuming part was finding a color palette that would go with peach. <laughs> so I landed on this blue. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the timeline. All right, so we're gonna see the timeline fade in, all the points fade in, and then we can select each point on the timeline to learn more. The way that I kind of approached this was um, choosing historical peach references. So we've got evidence of domestication, the Rockford peaches, James and the Giant Peach, Prince's Peach Toadstool, Georgia having peaches to state fruit, the presidents of the United States of America and their son Peaches and the peach emoji. So what I want to show you how to do is how to recreate a timeline like this without having to use any triggers. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. Now the first thing, <clears throat> we're just going to add a blank slide. The first thing that I did um, was format my background. And to format my background, I basically had the slot, uh, the web page up with the peach fudge, peach fuzz Pantone color of the year, and then I use the eyedropper to um, grab the color. So that's what I'm going to do here. We'll go format background, solid color, eyedropper, go over and grab peach fuzz. Cool. So we've got that. Then the next thing we had to do was add our header which I used Book Antica. Then we need to add <clears throat> our prompt. So I'm just gonna copy this prompt here. So then we had to create our timeline. So the timeline first starts with a line shape. We're going to hold shift down and create our line. And then we've got a perfectly straight line. So holding down shift will make sure that your um, line is completely straight or if you're creating an oval um, it will maintain the symmetry of the oval etc then we're going to go to format <clears throat> and sorry we're going to go to outline and i'm going to color it this not quite white color and then i'm going to make the weight uh, six points that looks good so i've got equal distance uh, for the most part maybe down one more equal distance for the most part between um, the prompt and the bottom of the slide. And so then the next thing that I did was I went ahead and researched all of the points that I wanted to have on my timeline. So you'll see here the dates. And so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points on my timeline. So we went into insert shape and an oval and I just created an oval holding down shift. So the fill that I did, sorry, was eyedropper and then I grabbed that same blue. And then for the outline, I did the same off white color and the weight of maybe four. So now I've got my oval. I'm going to center it on my line here and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just hit Control D and create seven. And I'm going to kind of space them. We, we have a pretty big jump between 6000 BC and 1943. 
then, and you could do this with the first one before you duplicate them, I went into states and I duplicated my state and I created a selected state, which is a built-in state. And I adjusted the color to be kind of a lighter gray, uh, like a gray blue. And then I hit done. And then you can go to double click your format painter and select all of your, all of your ovals, cool. Then what you're going to do is I'm going to label all of these items on the timeline because I just find it's easier to work with them, even if I'm not creating triggers, but especially if I'm creating triggers, uh, because then you don't have to figure out what oval seven is. Cool. And then I'm selecting all of my line and my ovals. I'm going up to animation, then I'm going to add a fade animation, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all appear about a half a second after one another. And so then once we have uh, all of our ovals, I'm going to select them and I'm going to right click and create a button set. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that all of um, these items can only be selectable one at a time. Um, and then the selected state is what prevents us from having to create any triggers because when you have a selected state, the user can just click the objects and um, whatever the state is will change instead of you having to create a trigger that says change state to selected when the user clicks 6000 BC or what have you. So then once we have our um, all of our button sets set up and our selected states set up. We're going to go select each oval and go into states, <clears throat> double click your selected state. And then first we're going to, I've got all of these images in my media library, but if you didn't, you would just insert picture. So I'm going to go to media library <clears throat> and I'm going to choose the image that I want for 6,000 BC, insert image, cool. Um, and then I'm going to resize that, bring it somewhere over here, move it, rotate it a little bit. And so now I've got my 6000 BC and I'm going to insert a text box, 6000 BC. And then I'm going to go over to my handy notepad where I jotted down all of the line items that the text that I wanted to include, copy that, and then paste it here. So then I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to go to animation, insert fade so that they don't kind of appear as abruptly. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the image, copy the text box, go to the next oval paste and I'm going to alternate between top and bottom. So here we go, copy, go to the next one, states, paste. Okay, so now that we have all of our objects, one thing that I like to do um, with any interaction is because usually there's audio on this base the base layer here, um, is or or you you may have no audio, but you just don't want to present additional content until all of the timeline items appear. Um, so I just like to add a blocker over the interactions. Uh, the interactive objects and then I'm going to make it 99% transparent because if it's 100% transparent you can still click the objects underneath and then no outline and so now oh and then I'll adjust it until just before the last object appears um, so that the rectangle disappears before that and then we can click so now when we preview this we should without creating any additional triggers see all of the points on our timeline change as we select the timeline objects.